everyone, I'm Abigail, this is James, and welcome to another Two Kids interview. We are joined today by award-winning author Marty Chan. Mr. Chan has written a number of book series, including The Marty Chan Mysteries, The Eric Wise Chronicles, The Barnabas Bigfoot Trilogy, and The Keepers of the Vault tri Trilogy. Mr. Chan also has written the books Will Power, Final Cut, Kung Fu Master, Haunted Hospital, True Story, and more. He has also had a radio show and written plays for the stage. He was also a part of an anthology and the Anti-Racist Kitchen that comes out next week. And in April of 2024, he has a book for younger kids coming out, Dragons on the Loose. Thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, it's great to be here. Hopefully the weather is nice down there. It's, it's kind of chilly up here in Canada yeah. right now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's rainy a little. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. This morning it was pouring. <laughs> oh, it's pouring this morning. Oh, we had fog this morning and uh, I had my furnace came on yesterday. So it's, it's, it's quite cold right now. Since it comes out next week, let's start by talking about the anthology we reviewed. We, we reviewed it on our sister channel, Two Kid Reviews, and really enjoyed cooking together. And talking about the an anti-racism, why did you decide to be a part of the Anti-Racist Kitchen? Well, for me, one of the great things about being a writer is you can come up with different ideas and, and put them into action. And so when the editor of the piece, Nadia Hahn, uh, approached me. She said, you know, I've got this idea for a book that has stories and recipes that deal with uh, maybe experiences that you've had growing up that uh, might deal with racism. And I had the perfect story for it. And I thought I really want to be a part of this because I want kids today to know the experiences that uh, people of color, people from diverse backgrounds sometimes experience so that kids today can sort of look at somebody from another country or another culture and say, you know what, I'm not going to treat them differently. They're just people. And I just want to treat them the same way that I'd want to be treated. There is more representation in books now than there ever has been. You and your books ha have been a part of that trend. Is that something that is important to you? Yeah, it's very important to me. It's, it's one of the things that I remember when I was growing up and, and going to the school library to find books that, that I wanted to read. Now, I love the books. They were really cool and they're really exciting, but I never saw myself in those books, right? They're usually characters that were Caucasian, uh, but there were no Chinese characters. And I thought, you know, where, where am I in those books? And it was only, I think I was in university when I came across my first piece of literature that actually had uh, Asian characters in them. And it was by an Asian American playwright named David Henry Huang. And he wrote a collection of plays, uh, M Butterfly, FOB. And it was the first time that I was like, hey, I'm represented in a story. And I kind of thought it was important for me to try to put as many Chinese uh, Canadian characters into my books so that uh, kids today can go, hey, wait a minute, I'm in that book. It's possible for me to be part of this world. And maybe it'll inspire some people to actually want to write their own stories down the line. We've interviewed a number of authors who have had books banned in certain places in the United States. That means in those places, kids don't have the same access to books that we have and may not be able to see themselves represented in the books. Can you give us your feelings on this? Uh, nobody should ever be afraid of a book. And, and I think one of the things that we're seeing, especially today, is we're letting people who are afraid of books dictate uh, what should go into schools and what should go into libraries. And th the irony is the way to overcome fear is to have people read more. And uh, so watching people try to ban books, they're taking away the very thing that will actually broaden and open their minds so that they're going to be more accepting and less scared in the future. So I, I think it's very important that we make sure that uh, we stand up against this this ba uh, book banning movement that is happening right now, not just in not just in the States, but it's happening around the world. We have to agree. Definitely. Can you tell us some ways your own childhood has influenced you in your writing? 
Oh yeah, I can tell you exactly. Uh, so right over here, uh, this is my novel, The Mystery of the Frozen Brains, uh, which was actually inspired by a childhood experience. And so when I was a kid, uh, my parents, they moved to a small town in Alberta, in Canada. And uh, our family, our family was the only Chinese family in the entire town. When I went to school, I didn't look like the other kids in my class. And in the beginning, they would tease me. They made fun of me. I was sad and lonely. And I kept wondering, why are they picking on me? And I started wondering, why do I look different than the other kids? And for some reason, I had the strange idea that my parents were aliens from outer space and they had come to the planet Earth to invade it. And that's why I look different from the other kids. So the mystery of the frozen brains right here is partially inspired by that childhood experience. And it's a good example of how I've rated my childhood for all sorts of story ideas. When you wrote the Eric Wise series, how much research did you do on Harry Houdini? Oh, I did tons and tons of research uh, for the Eric Weiss Chronicles and in particular Harry D Houdini. And when I was when I was a teenager, I loved stage magic. So early on, I knew about Harry Houdini. When I came to write the Eric Weiss Chronicles, I knew a lot about Harry Houdini's sort of history and his past, but I didn't know a lot about his magic tricks. So one of the fun things about uh, doing the research for uh, Demon Gate was I got to learn the secrets of magic, especially the ones that Harry Houdini did. And the one thing that he was famous for was escaping from a straitjacket. And uh, I, I actually bought a straight jacket and I tried to escape from the jacket. Uh, and uh, let's just say I wasn't really good at it. I was actually pretty terrible at it. Uh, in fact, uh, I'll, I'll show you my early attempts at trying to escape from a straight jacket. Let me see if I can bring that up for you. All right, as you can see, I was not good at trying to escape, but I sort of knew what you had to do in order to escape, and, and it's very dangerous. So don't ever try to escape from a straitjacket because uh, you do have to sort of uh, knock your shoulder out of a place a little bit to, to get out of it. Uh, so the research I did for uh, Eric Weiss Chronicles, Demon Gate, uh, it, was, it was a lot, but I actually enjoyed it because it was a subject matter that I enjoyed reading about. You have written in a number of genres, fantasy, mystery, realistic fiction. Is it hard to go back and forth? And do you have a favorite genre? Oh, yeah, it's, uh, well, I, I gotta be honest with you. I have a really short attention span. So it's easy for me to jump from genre to genre because I'd be like, car right over there uh so uh i get to jump around a lot and because it, it helps keep things fresh for me when i'm writing so if i get tired of writing something funny i can switch over to something serious and if i get tired of writing something serious i can flip over to the genre that i'm probably most excited about writing i like to write sort of scary stories uh creepy stories designed to you know give people nightmares uh so that's probably my favorite thing to write but but right now, I think if I can combine scary stories with funny moments, that's my perfect thing. So if I can come up with something that can both make you scream and laugh at the same time, that's sort of the perfect one for me. And, and the example I would give is this book right over here. Uh, it's called Keepers of the Vault, uh, Fire and Glass. And it's about two kids who think their school is haunted and they go in search of the mysterious noises that are happening at the fourth floor of their school building. And, and I won't give away what they discovered, but uh, it's, it's pretty creepy, but there are moments of humor in it. What is your process when putting a book together? Do you decide the end before the middle or do you put it together in order? Oh, wow. That's a great question. Uh, it depends. It depends on the story that I work on. Sometimes I'll know what the ending is. And sometimes I'll just have like a couple of ideas for a character and a setting. And I'll just jump in and I'll just explore and see where the story takes me. And I think that's to me, that's one of the important things that uh, you always have to keep in mind with writers. We all have different ways of tackling a story and there's no one right way to do it it's just a matter of piecing together something that makes sense to you and something that uh well gets you excited about writing and and that's really what we're all trying to do is just try to come up with ideas that we're excited about what writer has had the most influence in you 
Ooh, what writer has the most influence on me? Uh, uh, let me see if I can show you. Uh, the writer that I remember reading the most when I was young would have been uh, J.R.R. Tolkien. Uh, and uh, uh, I started off, I actually went backwards. I started off reading Lord of the Rings and uh, made my way through the trilogy. And then I heard about The Hobbit and I went back to The Hobbit and read that. And then I was like, oh, I should have started with The Hobbit. It's a lot easier to read than uh, Lord of the Rings. Uh, but uh, that uh, that got me excited about fantasy stories and uh, got me excited about the notion of writing. And I would say that uh, J.R.R. Tolkien was the one that uh, I remember the most from when I was a kid. On your website, MartyChan.com, you could give great writing tips and for kids of different ages. We recommend people check that out. But can you give us your favorite tip here for young writers? Ooh, my favorite tip. Let's see if I can come up with a favorite tip. Um, I think one of the things that we always have to keep in mind is is just the notion of uh, details, right? The, the, the thing that uh, helps us the most picture your story is the kind of details you use when you're describing, let's say, a setting or an object. So always use your sensory details, right? The five senses, what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you taste, and what you touch. And um, in fact, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, you know what? I, I, I got a cool way to show you what I'm talking about. Somewhere here, somewhere here, I have the coolest pen in the world. All right, so give me a second while I try to find my pen. Ah, yeah, right over here. All right. Believe it or not, this is the coolest pen in the world because this pen can turn into a lightsaber. You sit on a throne of lies. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. It's true. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, I can prove it to you. And I'm going to use the sensory details. In fact, I only need three of the five details to make this pen turn into a lightsaber. Now, first of all, I can feel the pen getting warm between my fingers and if i listen carefully i can hear the faint hum of the energy collecting in the pen and then when i look down i see a bolt of energy coming out of my lightsaber pen all right now that i've made a lightsaber time for me to uh figure out how to use this thing I know watch this pretty cool eh hold on and there you have it with just a few sensory details I turned this pen into a lightsaber just remember, it's all about what you see, what you hear, and what what you feel. Speaking of which, should I touch this? Yeah? Okay, all right, I'm going to touch. Are you sure about this? Yeah. Uh, okay, 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 here we go. Uh, maybe I'll just sign off here. No? Okay, all right, all right, all right, I'll touch this pen. Okay, hold on, let me touch the pen. There, I touched it. <laughs> okay. Oh, you want me to touch the lightsaber? Okay. Oh. Uh, maybe not a great idea. Uh. All right. So, don't worry. My hand's okay. My hand's okay. Everything's good. All right. So, just remember that's my tip. Use the sensory details to make things come to life in your story. That was awesome. That may have been my favorite part of any interview we've ever done. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We know about your upcoming children's book, Dragon on the Loose. Is there any other project that you are working on that you can tell us about? Uh, yeah, I've got a book that's going to be coming out next year called uh, Izzy Wong's Nose for News which is about a young girl who wants to be a podcaster and an investigative podcaster. And, and she's trying to solve mysteries at her school. And apparently somebody has flooded the girl's washroom at her school and she's trying to figure out who did it. Uh, so that's Izzy Wong's Nose for News and it's probably coming, coming out uh, next September, so a year from now. 
Finally, it's time for our Turbo Tip. Ten rapid-fire questions. Are you ready? No, but I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, what is your favorite phrase to use? Uh, my favorite phrase is no worries, uh, because there are no worries. Uh, you can always do things and make changes down the line. Number two, what is one subject you love to learn more about? Uh, the subject that I love to learn more about right now is video editing. As you can see, I'm doing a lot of cool <laughs> tricks here. Uh, and that's something yeah. I started learning about three years ago at the start of the pandemic. So before the pandemic, I didn't know how to do any of this stuff. Uh, and I'm still learning now. And it's uh, something I'm passionate about. Number three, what is your go-to snack food? Go-to snack food, uh, Cheetos. Definitely Cheetos. Number four, what was your favorite book growing up? Uh, my favorite book going up, I think, would have been uh, the first uh, in the trilogy of Lord of the Rings. Number five, if you could teleport somewhere right now, where would you go? Uh, I would teleport to a Jollibee restaurant so that I can get a peach and mango pie, which is uh, one of the foods that I probably am craving right now. Number six, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Oh, one superpower. Um, you know what? I think it's better if I show you. All right, let me show you my superpower. Wow. Okay, watch this. <laughs> okay, so that's the superpower that I wish I would have had, the ability to run really fast. Number seven. What was your favorite cartoon as a kid? Uh, my favorite cartoon as a kid would have been an old, old uh, cartoon show called The Flintstones. Number eight, what is your favorite rainy day activity? Oh, my favorite rainy day activity is to actually hang out with... Well, actually, it's my favorite activity any day is to cuddle with my two new cats. Uh, their names are uh Minnie and hugo they're the sweetest cats in the world and hugo actually loves to hug so on a rainy day i love to hug my big cat hugo number nine if you could have any three dinner guests who would they be uh three dinner guests so there would be uh my cat hugo uh my cat Minnie, and and my two former cats uh buddy and max i know it's four but uh they were they passed away uh a year and three years ago so i would like to reunite all my cats to have a dinner party together just so i could see my favorite uh, feline beings in the world number 10 what is the best piece of advice you were ever given uh best piece of advice i was ever given was never give up uh no matter how many times people will tell you no or that's not right. Uh, if you give up, you fail. But if you keep trying, even if you don't get something that you want, you're still trying and you're learning. And that's the way that you get to, to be better, not only as a writer, but as a person, is always be persistent and don't take no for an answer. You are awesome. Thank you so much for doing that. And thank you so much for spending this time with us. We can't wait to read your future books. Excellent. Thank you for that interview.